So Saul is established king over Israel. But he doesn't really know how to deal with the Philistines, who are overlords. They have garrisons spread throughout all the Israelite territory and won't allow the Israelites to build up any weaponry to defend themselves. Saul has appointed Jonathan as a captain in his army, and Jonathan, a young man, attacked one of the Philistine garrisons. Philistines reacted, bringing a large army against Saul, and Saul doesn't know what to do. Most of his army, ill-equipped and untrained, flee. He waited for Samuel, but he didn't wait long enough, and so he's transfixed by fear. But Jonathan is frustrated. Nothing stops the Lord delivering by many or by few, he says to his armour-bearer. Let's go up and see whether we can do anything. We'll show ourselves to the Philistines. If they say, come up, we'll go up. That's a sign from the Lord. And the Philistines say, come up, we'll show you something. So Jonathan and his armour-bearer creep up. And as they come across the Philistine, Jonathan tackles them and pulls them to the ground. And the armour-bearer kills them. About 20 men die. But then the Lord acts, bringing an earthquake, a shaking, a trembling, putting panic in the Philistines. And the Philistines run, they flee, and fight one another. Israelites among the Philistines turn against the Philistines. Israelites hiding in the hills come out of the hills to chase after the Philistines. And Saul has come to observe what was happening and to join in the battle. And the men of Israel were distressed that day. For Saul had placed the people under oath, saying, Cursed is the man who eats any food until evening, before I have taken vengeance on my enemies. So none of the people tasted food. Now all the people of the land came to a forest, and there was honey on the ground. And when the people had come into the woods, there was the honey dripping. But no one put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan had not heard his father charge the people with the oath. Therefore he stretched out the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped it in a honeycomb and put his hand to his mouth and his countenance brightened. Then one of the people said, Your father strictly charged the people with an oath, saying, Cursed is the man who eats food this day. And the people were faint. But Jonathan said, My father has troubled the land. Look now how my countenance has brightened because I tasted a little of this honey. How much more if the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemies which they found. For now would there not have been a much greater slaughter among the Philistines. Now they had driven back the Philistines that day from Michmash to Agilon. So the people were very faint. And the people rushed on the spoil and took sheep, oxen and calves and slaughtered them on the ground and the people ate them with the blood. Then they told Saul, saying, Look, the people are sinning against the Lord by eating with the blood. So he said, You have dealt treacherously. Roll a large stone to me this day. Then Saul said, Disperse yourselves among the people, and say to them, Bring me here every man's ox and every man's sheep. Slaughter them here and eat, and do not sin against the Lord by eating with the blood. So every one of the people brought his ox with him that night and slaughtered it there. Then Saul built an altar to the Lord. This was the first altar that he built to the Lord. Now Saul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night, and plunder them until the morning light, and let us not leave a man of them. And they said, Do whatever seems good to you. Then the priest said, Let us draw near to God here. So Saul asked counsel of God, Shall I go down after the Philistines, Will you deliver them into the hand of Israel? But the Lord did not answer him that day. And Saul said, Come over here, all you chiefs of the people, and know and see what this sin was today. For as the Lord lives, who saves Israel, though it be Jonathan my son, he shall surely die. But not a man among all the people answered him. Then he said to all Israel, You be on one side, and my son Jonathan and I will be on the other side. And the people said to Saul, Do what seems good to you. Therefore Saul said to the Lord God of Israel, Give us a perfect lot. So Saul and Jonathan were taken, but the people escaped. And Saul said, Cast lots between my son Jonathan and me. So Jonathan was taken. 
Then Saul said to Jonathan, Tell me what you've done. And Jonathan told him and said, I only tasted a little honey with the end of the rod that was in my hand, so now I must die? Saul answered, God do so and more also, for you shall surely die, Jonathan. But the people said to Saul, Shall Jonathan die, who has accomplished this great deliverance in Israel? Certainly not. As the Lord lives, not one hair of his head shall fall to the ground, for he has worked with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan, and he did not die. Then Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, and the Philistines went to their own place. Saul established his sovereignty over Israel, and fought against all his enemies on every side, against Moab, against the people of Ammon, against Edom, against the kings of Zobah, and against the Philistines. Wherever he turned, he harassed them. And he gathered an army and attacked the Amalekites, and delivered Israel from the hands of those who plundered them. The sons of Saul were Jonathan, Jeshua, and Melchishua. And the names of his two daughters were the firstborn Merab, and the second Michal. The name of Saul's wife was Ahinoam, the daughter of Ahimaaz. And the name of the commander of his army was Abner, the son of Ner, Saul's uncle. Gish was the father of Saul, and Ner, the father of Abner, was the son of Abiel. Now there was fierce war with the Philistines all the days of Saul. And when Saul saw any strong man or any valiant man, he took him for himself. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we shared the conclusion of 1 Samuel chapter 14. Saul is still trying to find his feet as a commander of the Lord's army. He didn't know when to act. When he did act, he made foolish commands like requiring the people not to eat. But they're in a battle. They should eat while they're fighting. And so the people run out of steam and do not have a greater victory as they should have. Jonathan had not heard the ban on eating, and he had eaten, not in rebellion to his father, but because the opportunity was there. When the sun set and they were allowed to eat, the people were famished. They killed livestock to eat them, but they were not slaughtering them properly. It was one of the very fundamental rules of God that the children of Israel not eat flesh with the blood. And so he calls the people to bring their animals together and slaughter them properly. And he sets up an altar to the Lord for their peace offerings. Having eaten, he thinks we should go and pursue the battle at night and completely defeat the Philistines. And the people with him are happy to go along with him. But the priest says we should ask the Lord. He is a religious man and doing what he thinks is right. But he doesn't have that fellowship with God that others would have. The priest says, let's ask the Lord. And the Lord doesn't answer. They try and find out why. And it turns out it's because Jonathan ate honey against his father's instruction. Well, when the people who are generally happy to go along with whatever Saul says, see that Saul's going to execute his own son, they rise up against Saul. No, he's worked with God today. He surely shall not die today. But this is a turning point in Saul's reign as king. He now has had a victory under his belt. He now is established as a king to be reckoned with. And he gets on with the business of overcoming all the enemies that harass them on every side. Those who plunder them. And of course the key one who's fighting against them are the Philistines. And the battle with the Philistines will last many, many years. Saul will never overcome the Philistines, though he continues to resist them. But whenever he sees a valiant man, he recruits him into his army. We're told of his family, three sons and two daughters. He appoints his cousin, Abner, the son of Ner, as commander of his army. 